we can start to work together. We are a great country and a selfish country and a compassionate country. And I intend to make that my basis for running and over the period of the next year. 50 years ago this week, Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated moments after winning the California Democratic presidential primary. Following his funeral here in New York, Kennedy's body was carried by train to Washington, D.C. Along the way, thousands of mourners lined the tracks to pay their final respects. That train trip is enshrined in the memories of those who witnessed it. And it is the subject of a special photo exhibit on display here in New York. It was the train that stopped the world for a moment of remembrance. The heartbroken and grief-stricken line 225 miles of train tracks for a final farewell. Riding along in the train carrying the body of Robert F. Kennedy was photojournalist Paul Fusco, whose pictures of the eight-hour journey are now on display at the Danziger Gallery in New York City. This photograph shows two of the constituents of Bobby Kennedy's supporters. The respect uh, in this in this picture that everyone is paying to this funeral train really just chokes you up. James Danziger, the owner of the gallery, has known Fusco for almost 20 years. There were other photographers on the train and nobody did what Paul did. He had three cameras, he was changing film as he needed to, and he just stuck with this and achieved this remarkable body of work. The pictures were supposed to appear in Look magazine. But because of its publication schedule, by the time the next issue went to print, the photos were deemed out of date and never published. So they were buried in the Look archive, and when Look folded, they were donated to the Library of Congress. They weren't cataloged, and nobody knew where they were. And in 1998, a researcher at Magnum contacted John Kennedy Jr., who at the time was publishing a magazine called George Magazine, and they published a selection of these pictures and that's how these pictures first came out into the world. And the world took notice. What is significant about these pictures is both on one hand photographically that they are beautiful and moving and incredibly well composed pictures and then also they are a portrait of America in all its richness and diversity. Well, come on in. CBS This Morning co-anchor John Dickerson toured the train coach that carried RFK's body. This is the parlor. And this is where the casket was placed. Bennett Levin was one of the thousands of bystanders in Philadelphia who came to pay their respects 50 years ago. He now owns the coach. I think people came out because in their hearts, they believed the message that he was offering them. And that was the only way they could show respect. A solemn feeling that can still be felt today through Fusco's work. One of the reasons that I think the photographs are so powerful today is that what they stand for and what Bobby Kennedy stood for are values that we seem to really miss. It's not just history, but also a little mystery. James Danziger tells us no one in this picture of a family lined up according to height has ever been identified. He says it is the most famous picture in the collection. And Bobby Kennedy was so inspirational to so many people, as you can see through those images. He used to say, he was paraphrasing the ancient Greeks, that he thought of us as a, a, the opportunity to sort of tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. And that's what brought people out. His fight continues to this day, actually. The Portrait of America, a great way of looking at it as so well. 